don't teach loyalty, then the enemy will come in. And the big thing that we have will become desolate. anything else everything has been so spectacular but my father my founder my pastor I have many stories about my father as you can well imagine and not only did my father cause me to exist physically but he has caused me myself and my brother Jason to exist in the ministry and not many people can have that testimony about their biological fathers so that's very special to us. And Bishop Dag writes a book called The Anointed and His Anointing. And in that book, he describes the anointed man of God as an agent. So if you've ever bought property before, and by the grace of God, I've been able to buy a property before. And because of that, I had to work to, through someone called a real estate agent. So I didn't want this agent. I wanted the house. But in order for me to get this house... I had to work through this real estate agent because this agent was, was working through many, many processes to make sure that I get what I really want. So there's so many things that we really want in life. We want our healing. We want financial prosperity. We want deliverance from so many things. We want breakthroughs in so many areas of your life. But you're going to miss it and you may never receive it if you don't accept the agent of the Lord that is in your midst. And Pastor Chris has been an agent in my life. If you, Pastor Chris has been an agent in your life, can we celebrate the man of God today? He has been an agent for so many of your victories. Amen. Keep clapping your hands. Keep clapping your hands. We have our founder in our midst today. He is the founder of this church. There will never be another founder. There is only one founder. And he's here today with a word from God to bless us. So as you keep clapping, as you make noise, let's welcome God's anointed servant. Jehovah, my pastor, Jehovah, Pastor Chris. I see you everywhere. Blessed Redeemer. Your glory fills the earth. Everlasting Father, the one who watches me, I put my confidence in Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah. Jehovah Shammah. I see you everywhere. Blessed Redeemer, your glory fills the earth. Everlasting Father. The one who watches me, I put my confidence alone in Jehovah Shammah. One more time. Jehovah Shammah, I see you everywhere. Blessed Redeemer, your glory fills the earth. Everlasting Father, the one who watches me. I put my confidence in Jehovah Shammah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has our hearts not been stirred this morning by the wonderful ministration of music, singing? I've already been filled. I'm sure you have also been filled. Amen. What better place to be than the house of God? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you for this awesome privilege to be in your presence. As we gather, may your spirit now work within us to touch us and to change us and to bless us. Thank you for this privilege and the honor to meet with the saints of God. In Jesus' name, we open our lives to the word to be transformed even more so that the image of Jesus can shine from our faces. We thank you for everything in Jesus' name. 
Amen, Amen. You may all be seated. Thank you. Now it's a special service, of course, so um, our time will not be regular. But I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I was so blessed by all of the music. And um, we continue tonight again at 6 p.m. There are people that didn't have a chance to minister like Loli and other singers that will be here tonight. Amen. The Founders Day service is something that um, my pastor Bishop Derek said that all pastors must have. Amen. If I had to choose, I wouldn't have wanted something like this because I'm not the type that, that put on Facebook when it's my own birthday. It's now, uh, I see it's a new thing. People say, uh, uh, happy birthday to me. <laughs> I don't understand it, but at any rate, I'm not of that persuasion. But I'm of the persuasion that I must be obedient to the instructions of my pastor. And for that reason, we have what we call a Founders Day. But as I'm even sitting there and receiving the beautiful ministrations, I also have a slight understanding why it's an important day. Amen. The Founders Day works in parallel with the birthday of the founder. Yes, and for that reason, we have gathered here to celebrate the Founders Day and also the birthday. So, if you're just visiting here by chance, you are lucky because we will celebrate birthday today. Amen. My birthday is somewhere in the week. I'm not sure where it is, but because I live for Ghana, I live for Ghana next week, Sunday morning, with some of the pastors here for the conference, the annual conference. We decided to have it today, so we don't have a rush. Is it wonderful? How many of you have really enjoyed church today? Church is so nice. Amen. All I ever know is living for Jesus. I've been a Christian for many, many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. I don't know anything else, so this, I don't have a rush to go anywhere but to be here. Psalm 27 verse 4 says, I want to dwell here, always here, in the Lord's presence. Amen. And I'm very blessed to be your pastor, and I'm so blessed by the testimonies, let me say that also. So beautiful how the Lord has changed lives. It really makes me, me emotional. If I say that I didn't shed a tear here today, I'll be lying. Because you realize how God can use the simple things in life to change the lives of people. And you almost wonder, what did you really do? You didn't do much, but you just said, yes, Lord, I am here. Use me. And for all of you, it is the same. You wonder how you can be an instrument in God's hands, but you shouldn't bother much. Just give yourself, and God will use you. Amen? God will use you to change the lives of many people. Last week, I was blessed to be in Durban with my spiritual father, the one who ordained me in the video. That's Pastor Lafoy. Because he wasn't well, and I decided, as a good son, to go and visit him with my wife. And also to see if it would be possible for him to come to us in September. Because in September, we will be having our dedication of the first part of the project. This first phase of the building, and we, we would love him to come and do that part for us. He's 81 years old now. But the Lord used him to father me in the ministry. And I'm always grateful. And I always honor him, pay respects to him. And then it was 
he in turn that also made it possible for me to meet Bishop Dag through his connections and relationships. So that great help was given to me and I thank the Lord for these great pastors in my life that have blessed me and helped me and catapulted me forward. Chalak me in a certain way. Chalak to move you forward. To bring you forth. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. And as I was teaching there last week and just as I am teaching always, I believe that the teaching is important for all of you to change your life. I don't have to teach highfalutin things. I just have to teach you the basics in the Bible. Amen. And the basics in the Bible is sometimes things that we miss. I'm saying that to say this, that as I looked over the pictures that they have displayed, I realized there's been much fighting to accomplish what you see here today. I've been battered. I've been bruised. I've been abused. But I'm still here. And I thank God that it came my way, not just by salvation, but by the way of ministry. Because I could have done ministry in another way. Are you with me? I could have done ministry, yes, from the Bible. I could have been, been teaching you, maybe not in this beautiful facility, because I don't think this would have been possible. You see... Depends where you are and who you, where the Lord leads you to where you will end up. Isn't it so? If you get in a plane and you fly in that direction to Pretoria, you are not going to Los Angeles. So I thank God for this grace. Now, because... We have an enemy. I have to start there always. <laughs> Ministry is war. Amen. Ministry is such a war that if you don't know it's a war, you won't be fighting. And you'll be defeated all the time with your small church, your inner fighting your disloyal members. These things are common. Are you listening to me? These things are common in ministry. And when things are common, you kind of have an idea. Maybe this is how it should be. You know? Your Christianity, you might think, this is how Christians must behave. Then when you notice something different, then you might think it's uncommon. But I've got news for you today. Everything that I teach you must line up with the word of God. I like this group. I don't know why I'm going to be teaching to them. Today. Everything a pastor ever teaches you. Look, I might not be here forever. I'm not Jesus. I'm not the Holy Spirit. One day I, I might not be here. Then whatever pastor is teaching here must teach you what is in the Bible. Do you agree? Amen. But strangely enough, when we become so accustomed to a certain way of understanding things, whenever there's a, another revelation, not, not a new revelation, just a deeper or another revelation, then we kind of become afraid and we, we become uh, suspicious. That's enough for you now. We become suspicious and say, What a new good is this? What new thing is this? Let me tell you, there's nothing new in the Bible. 
So if the pastor is talking from the Bible, how can it be new? <laughs> the Bible is 2,000 years. Uh, I mean, Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. So about 1,500 years ago, the Bible was actually brought to its, its full canon. Canon of Scripture. Are you listening? Now, the reason why people say it's new it's because the enemy succeeds to put us all in a little box and say, this is how you must do church. Please listen, I'm going to teach you something great today, alright? This is how you must do church. It's the same like when Moses came to say to Pharaoh, let my people go. He said, okay, you can go, but just this far. You can go and have church. But just this far. Then he first said, only take the men. Leave the ladies here because he knew why. They can't go far because they're coming back for the ladies. Uh -huh. It's a type of church, but not the way God wanted it. Then Moses came back. He said, no. The ladies and the young ones, they must also come. So Pharaoh said, okay, take them. But leave your animals here. But Moses said no. With the animals. We sacrifice. To the Lord our God. And Pharaoh wanted to stop the sacrifice. The devil always wants to prevent you from sacrificing. Because sacrifice produces power. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus died on the cross and Satan said to him, you don't have to die on the cross. Just bow before me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I know what you're trying to do. You want to prevent me from paying a price, sacrificing, because sacrifice produces power. Hallelujah. And Moses said, give me all the cattle. And all the sheep that belongs to us, not one wolf will be left behind. We are not going to serve the Lord in a haphazard, in a confused way. We're going to serve Him with all our strength and with all our might. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, the war I'm talking to you about is when we see beautiful things in the Bible, the enemy wants to stop it because it's not the cultural way of the way we do church here. So I'm going to just, for a few minutes, if you allow me, if you don't allow me, you can go, but you're not going to get any cake. I'm, I'm just warning you. And I give it to you, you will cook us here. You will cook us here. You will cook us here. So today, I'm going to teach you, and I, and I would love you all to learn by teaching. Alright? Why we do a service like this? It's very simple. I'm going to teach you why. That's why I say, I don't actually like it. I don't, it's not my style. I don't wish myself happy birthday. I don't wish my, I don't say happy birthday to me. Early in the morning, 5 past 12. Today. <laughs> That's why I say my birthday is somewhere in the week. I don't know when, but we celebrate the whole week. Me and the guys here at the site, you are welcome to come. We'll buy you some chicken legs and uh, you can celebrate with us all the time. Amen. But I'm going to teach you why it is important to honor and why, what type of reward you will get in honor. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to say this. It's not new. Because it's in the the scriptures I'm going to read to you now doesn't come from Red Riding Hood. It's from the Bible. Maar omdat jij dat is zo gekend dat hij zegt zij wat een nieuwe ding is hij wat is niet zij is zij is altijd zwaar. It's not new. Do you see? I tell you, if we didn't have a devil we would have been allowed to do the, and teach these things easily. Yeah. 
So we are confronted and challenged. Why do you do church the way you do church? Like us, BMI, because we're slightly different. Slightly different. Why do you do it like that? Why don't you, why don't you conform to the way that everybody does it? No, no, no. We don't want to conform. We want to do what God wants us to do. What is the perfect will of God? Not the submissive will. The perfect will. Amen. And you might also be here and think, You are asking a very good question. If you sit quietly, I will give you. Give me 20 minutes and I'll teach you. 20 Pentecostal minutes. Last week I was preaching in Durban. I had to rush through my sermon. Because I'm not used to this rushing. And people don't know they are being, they are being, what's the right word? They've been hypnotized by Satan. I mean, how can God lovers just want to run home all the time? You come to where God's presence is and you want to get out all the time. I don't understand it. The day you understand it, please let me know. You see, pastor, people have appointments. What? Appointments? Where? The hairdresser? They book panorotis on a Sunday because it's buy one, get one, free. <laughs> or I saw in the newspaper, my wife laughed at me, I asked my wife, Wanna see Drian to Anasta? She said, Sondag. She said, Ukum, Ixi. Lion, as I wanna play. Hungry lion at the special. 199 for 26 pieces. My eight of the three and two nasta. As my dad had to nasta. Say, Darum, I look men so fruit at the cake. People run for the specials. But hang 10, it's very important. It's, I, I'm, I'm like you, I was never taught these things, so I didn't quite understand it. But when the Lord graced me to, to see that this is in the Bible, and it's a big part of our lives that we are missing, actually, as the gift of God, the Bible says, He gave gifts unto men, in Ephesians 4 verse 11. Amen? You agree with me? He said, He gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. Right, and then he says, like the, the beautiful Sunday school, oh, it was so beautiful when the boy said, Jeremiah 3.15, he gave them pastors after their own heart that will feed them with knowledge and understanding. Then he went on to quote, they shall not be few, they shall be many. I thought, look at this now. We're raising a new generation of powerful pastors. Hallelujah. So it's, it's not new. So when I discovered it, I realized, wow, this is what we've been missing. And this is actually it, that the gift that was given to you cannot operate in full operation towards you if you don't do the proper honor that the Bible says you must give it. Why, pastor? Where, where do you get this? In the Bible. Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 6. Something's wrong. Yeah, I must go this way. <clears throat> I'm just joking. I'm joking. Let me try. Satan, I resist you in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 6, the Bible says, Jesus came to his hometown. I'm not talking just about a prophet, but the greatest prophet that ever lived, right? He wasn't just a prophet. He was actually God in the form of a man, Jesus. There was nothing impossible for him. But when he came to his hometown... The people re recognized him that he grew up among them. And then they started to question his background. And say, is this not the carpenter's son? We went to school with him in Nazareth. Where does he get these things from? So what happened there, listen carefully to me, they didn't honor him. What does honor mean? Honor means to pay a high respect. To value someone highly. And the Bible says because they didn't honor him. He couldn't do mighty works there. Jesus. 
who could raise the dead, make blinded eyes to see, make the cripples to walk. But in his hometown, because of the dishonor, his gift couldn't work for the people. There it is. And he could there do no mighty work. Except, the word saved there is except that he laid hands on a few sick folk. He did heal some people, but those were the few that had an honor on him. Didn't really know him. I said, I can't you also heal me? So, this is not new. That mark was there all the years. Then Jesus and the disciples asked him, Lord, why couldn't you heal the people? He said, you see, a prophet, a prophet is always honored, but in his own hometown and amongst his own people, there's no honor. So it is the dishonor that prevents the gift that God gave you to be fully operational towards you. Do you understand? In other words, I've got something for you, but you cannot receive it because you have blocked it through your dishonor. So as much as I really don't like to be made a fuss of, you can ask my wife, I'm not the type that like to be clapped hands for, I really don't, it really is not my style. Maybe because I've always fought hard for what I want. Do you know? But I also realize that if I don't allow you that opportunity to honor me, what I have can never really come to you. Somebody asked me some time ago and said, why is it that people like my missionaries that are far, they, they can sense them that when, I'm, when the anointing is on me strong, the anointing is not always on me in the same way. I am anointed. And then there's a, there's a certain blanket that comes on me when I'm doing the work. Because the anointing is not to show off. The anointing is for the work of the ministry. Uh -huh. The Lord has anointed me to preach. So when I'm preaching, the anointing is flowing. To heal the sick, yes, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. It's for the work of the ministry. So somebody asked me, why is it that people like L.P. Ellison and then Pastor Charlene, they don't even come close and then the power of God bangs them to the floor. I said, you see, they've moved far from me. And so when they come, there's a high level of honor, a very high level. They don't see me as you see me. Unfortunately, you're with me every day. Not every day, but more often. But they. Was last week, uh, the Sunday evening. No, I wasn't here. It was the Friday, there was a concert here. And I was just saying goodbye to people. Then they came to say that, I won't see them because I was leaving the morning for Durban. I must just pray for them. <laughs> I was in my drip clothes. You know, drip. I always think that the anointing is not strong in the drip. But I was mistaken. I was relaxing here. I was relaxing. Because of my shoes, I... And the carpet. And I said, kneel down. And they knelt. Everybody was chatting. And then it's like a wave, like a, like a wave came through the window. And they all fell like dominoes. I didn't even start to pray. And I real and I said... Then L.P. Allison came around and you know, she doesn't need anything. She doesn't need anything. It is how you perceive 
the, the servant that God gave you. No, he's not a king. Nothing special. He's a servant. But your perception of the servant either makes you receive or block what is given to you. God didn't send angels to minister to us. He sent human beings. Oh, yeah. And depending on how you receive that human being, it depends what you will get. Now, why a human being? Because a human being is very similar to you. You're also a human being. Not a wuna being, a human being. Isn't it right? So, if in your mind you say, but he's also a man like me, you have equalized yourself. In other words, I'm like you, you like me. You're not wrong in a certain sense. You see? But humility will make you say, although he's a man like me, he's got something that God gave him that I don't have. That's why all things in the ministry work by humility. I want you to understand very clearly. You will not go far unless you're humble. I said in the church growth conference, I said, the greatest key to church growth is humility. People couldn't understand. What do you mean, pastor? I said simply this. If I have a church like this, right, and I think I'm great, which means I'm starting to become proud. So there's another pastor with a bigger church. So I'm not, I'm, I want to compete with him. That's, that's not humility, that's pride. I must say, pastor, you have got something I don't have. I humble myself and I ask you, teach me. What are you doing that I don't have? That's humility, right? I will humble myself to say, Pastor, did you write a book about church growth? Let me take my time to read the book. I don't say, yeah, book no man. man. And even this exercise of the Founders' Day and the fact that you must bring something to the offering basket, you, you, I, I tell you the truth, it's not my style. Was Mary Styles, no, was Mary Styles, you like a It's not my style. A real man like me, I'm some of the last real men around, you know? There's a movie called The Last of the Mohegans. I'm the last of the Mohegans. I don't, I don't run away. I will stand to fight. Yeah. So a man like me, you don't really want to receive, a, a man, a real man doesn't want to receive offerings. Do you know? It's almost like you're living off the offerings of the people. You're living off the offerings of poor people. You, you kind of think in my natural sense. I'm telling you in my natural sense, I say many men, I can marry two years and say, oh, what's that? Kom ek nou jylle twee rinsies. Want die pastor moet betaal van die twee rinsies wat daar in die boot val. If you didn't know, that little money you put in the boat. So, so the natural sense of me is, nee man. You see? But now, it is also a form of humility for me. There's no boasting. The founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley said, he stood with a hat in the front of the congregation and the people brought their pennies to put in the hat. It wasn't easy for him because he's a man. A man don't like to have this idea, uh, we must yap you. No, a man wants to say, nobody yap me. Do you get it? So the ministry will humble you. The ministry will bring you down. And it's when you're down, then you can go up. Hallelujah. In the kingdom, the way up is the way down. The way to receive is the way to give. Glory to God. So quickly I read you something. Quickly sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. But that introduction I gave you now, it applies to all the things we teach you. There's nothing new that we are teaching you. I actually got this thought when I was in the home cell. I visited the home cells on... Wednesday, I'm coming to home cells from now on. Get your tea bags ready. I'm coming to sit in your home cell, your connect group, your bar center. Yeah, I'm coming to enjoy your wonderful interactions. Amen. 
I realized I must teach the people. If anybody confronts you concerning what you believe, if you have grown a little, you will be able to answer the people. Amen? But because you are not yet grown, you're still a milk-drinking Christian. You don't know what to say. So I want to help you with my teachings from the, the pulpit to say, why do you do what you do? Why do you have a, why, why do you have a honor for your pastor service? Come on, say, I say, apply your Bible. Open your Bible to the book of John, chapter 11. Amen. I will show you where it comes from. Hallelujah. It's because you don't study your Bible, you don't listen to the preaching, that you also don't have a defense for what you believe. You must have an answer for what you believe. You say, my pastor said, no, don't ever say my pastor said, says the Bible says. The what? The Bible says. And you will see that people will stop talking to you because they discover that you're not, uh, you're not a snowflake believer. John chapter 11 verse 1. This is the beautiful story, I just paraphrase it to save time. Of Jesus coming to sit by people who honored him. Are you listening to me? Jesus walked the earth for 33 years. Let's say for three years he was in ministry. Most of the 30 years he was making tables and coffins in his father's shop. A carpentry shop. He was a carpenter. Then for three years he was moving around with disciples ministering. And in the ministration, there was a house he used to go to. You can imagine if, it's, if somebody's around for three years, he'll be in and out of the town. It's not that he just came once and went on. Don't get the wrong idea. Three years is, is, is enough time to make a few visits. Hmm? So when he came into this town of Bethany, there was a family with two sisters and a brother. Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Are you all with me? It's a Sunday school lesson. Beautiful. And then he would often go there because they treated him nice there. People go where they are treated nice, isn't it? If you always question them, always argue with them, we don't go there. I have family members who always want to argue the Bible with me. I haven't been there for years. Because it's not nice there. But when people treat you nice, Oh, you always want to go back, isn't it? The treating nice is another word for honor. They highly respect you. They treat you well. Glory to God. So Jesus was highly honored in the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Hallelujah. Then, if you didn't hear before, you should know that he raised this man from the dead who was dead for four days. I'm quickly paraphrasing, then it saves a lot of time. There are many great miracles Jesus did. Many people feel this is the greatest one because if you're dead for a day, you could possibly say, I was maskin in a coma. You see? The, 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 the girl that died uh, from Jairus' daughter, she was dead only a few minutes and then Jesus raised her from the dead and people probably, possibly said, Say, was he rare to it? Then, there was a boy that was carried to his grave from Nain. It's in the Bible. Sorry if you don't know the Bible. You reckon only even Genesis with your beginning. Jesus was, there was a whole group walking to bury this boy. He was probably dead a day or two. And then Jesus stopped the funeral procession and said to the boy, he saw the mother crying. She already lost her husband. She was a widow. Now the only breadwinner is dead. And because he's a compassionate man, he stopped the entourage and he said, Hoi! Spoke to the boy, said, shut up. And the boy got up. And then some critics 
from Delft said, This boy maybe wasn't really dead. He was in what we call a long sleeping coma. So after Jesus visited these people a lot, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, he got the news that Lazarus is dead. And he loved them so much. It's the only place in the Bible where he says he cried. His humanity made him cry because he saw Martha weeping. He saw Mary weeping. Sometimes at the funeral, you don't really cry for the person in the coffin. But if you see how the people cry, you, becomes, you become so sad. You become sad for them that are sad. Isn't it true? So when he saw them weeping, the Bible said he also wept. I mean, Jesus cried. John 11, 35 is the shortest scripture in the Bible. Jesus wept. Two, 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 two words. Jesus wept. Then, he said, wait, wait, wait. I'm not going now. Because when I raised the girl, they said she just was in a bit of a trance. When I raised the boy, they said he's in a coma for two days. Lost demon. Leave him for four days. I want to show them that I can conquer even the greatest enemy of man. Do you know what's the greatest enemy of man? Death is the final enemy. So if, they, if he didn't die the first day, surely the second day or the third day, or he, he will suffocate in the tomb because you can't live for so many days. And then he raised him from the dead, the greatest miracle. It is not my focus. I want to show you that even that miracle was done for them because he frequently went in and out of their house. Now, if you read the Gospels um, and you read the chronological order, yes, it speaks of it was where Lazarus was. Uh, this was the people after Jesus raised him. They treated him well. But you will see from the text that he frequently went in and out. It wasn't the first time that he came to raise Lazarus. He knew this family well. And they treated him well. Amen? Quickly. Because I had no clamor. Wait, I'm going to talk about it so long. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to John 11 verse 1. A certain man was sick. His name was Lazarus of Bethany. Put it to me in the other version quickly, then it sounds nice. Please, is the NLT, quickly. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters Mary and Martha. Yes! This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. You can't be a dear friend if I didn't know you long. Amen. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. Hallelujah. Just still there. Just still there. So Mary and Martha, I'm teaching you why we're doing this service today, so that you can go home and understand. The greatest thing in life you must get is understanding. Everybody say understanding. It's the best thing in the world. Yeah. Solomon said, get wisdom. And then also in all you're getting, get understanding. Lack of understanding which makes you stupid. Amen. Mary and Martha are the ultimate examples of those who reap the benefits of honor. Because they honor Jesus and they reap the full rewards of honor. My sermon is called the rewards of honor. And you are going to be rewarded today if you came purposefully to honor me here today. Yes. It was this Mary who anointed the Lord's feet and wiped his feet with her hair. 
The honor they bestowed on Jesus was unparalleled. There's nothing like it in the Bible. We even sing about it today. Is it, is it C.C. Winans who sings? You don't know the cost of the oil in my hand. Yeah, it's a song of that woman, Mary. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. They reap the rewards of honor because so many nice things happened to them. Number one, Jesus came to their house. Wow! He was sitting in their house. Listen, I'll tell you a secret. You know, I meet many people who admire Bishop Dag because we, there's a lot of people who follow Bishop Dag. Bishop Dag is the person you saw. Was, it, was he on the screen? Yeah. It's the person you saw me sit with a lot. He's my pastor, my father. But I'm so blessed to know him because it's almost like the Billy Graham of that day. Do you see? He's not a small man. Oh, no, 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 no. He's a big man. His church in Ghana, this church here is the dining room. This size is the dining room. Only the dining room. I don't want to tell you anything else. The, you have dogs in your, in your yard. He has crocodiles in the river. I don't want to go further. So you don't know, you don't actually know the extent of the blessing we had to have him here. To get him now, it's almost like impossible. But I have a lot of favor, so I'm going to keep pressing the buttons to try to get him back here one day. But what we do is when we have, as the, as the years go by, you see the, his popularity is very strong. People come from Russia, from Ukraine, from America. They're all coming to see him. But I was blessed many years ago when I met him. You see, I, he came to my house. I'm teaching about Jesus coming to your house. Then when we talk like, oh, from where you know Bishop Dag? Oh, from where you know Bishop Dag? And we go, oh, I know him. Then when I see then when I see them, the, the guys are sh showing their muscles about how, you know, because to be close to somebody great, it's like you say, I know the president. You know, closeness, you know. I went to school with the president. Something like that. I went to school with his sister. Say, can you for me, my say the sister, the sister's aunt is cousin's nephew. <laughs> you always want to be great, so you, uh, you can so when they're all boasting about this, then I ask, they ask them, has Bishop been to your house? Jup still amalistu. They say, what? I say, yes. He's been to my house. And if they press, 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 then I say, has he ever drank tea in your house? You see, because even eating and drinking you don't do if you don't trust people. people especially a man like him. And even, I, I'm on a small scale, but I also have this thing. I don't eat anyway. Because remember, I must still preach. Imagine my stomach is starting to work from that curry I just ate before the sermon. Then I say, Vessel sing gewoon lip. So we pastors, we are careful. We don't just eat. And we try not to eat before, man, before we preach. We rather wait till everything is done. We eat in the night. So for a man to come and drink tea in your house. Hmm. Jesus came to Mary. Jesus. I'm just using Bishop. He's a human being. But a great human being. But Jesus. The God man. Kashetolamaka. He came into my house one very special day. Hey! And he sat and he ate there because he was relaxed there. They gave him the best seat and they took out the nicest cutlery because he came there. So we frequently went there because of the respect and the honor that they received there. 
Are you hearing me? Look at the rewards. They had him sitting in their house. They had him do the ultimate miracle. They were close to Jesus. They even had access. You can't just get access easily. Every year when we go to Ghana, I've been going for the past 12 years. Then when the conference is finished, then the bishop has an office. Then you see the queues of people. Everybody just wants a few minutes private, like you get two or three minutes. And every year, by God's grace, I've had that access. Access. Every year you think it's becoming more difficult because the lines are longer. There's a certain blessing to have access. And I'll tell you now, if I think through many things, Pastor Charlie, it is the level of honor that has given me this access. Yeah. The level of research. So like people say, say, I look so after man. No, but he does. You see, the man doesn't see it like that. The man who receives the honor from you doesn't see what people see. I see honor. And the honor will give you access. So as your uncle come, all of your ouders from Pitpom Plaza International Ministry, and they say, "Go for pastor, sin." I can't even come and come, but they can come. It's a pastor because you've got access because of your level of honor. I was a man at the gate yesterday. He needed to see me. I said, I can't see you. Send somebody else to talk to him. He doesn't have access. Because I've never had any honor from him before. Only loafing. Loafing is not honor. Hello? Change your mentality. All of you from Delft, listen. You've come to this church not to be a loafer. No. No, no. There's, there's this word they used yesterday, uh, entitlement. When you feel entitled as Ampa, you're a us. Uh, the government owes us free food. The church owes us free. No, no. There's no sense of entitlement. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like some of you even think that you're doing God a favor to come sit here today, isn't it? And when you bring your money, you say, That's a sense of entitlement. Let me tell you something. God doesn't need you. And the church doesn't need you. You need God. And you need the church. I don't think pastor must be nice to us because we come. That's a sense of entitlement. That's a poverty mentality. May God deliver you from such a mentality. You will not be a poor person in this life. God is going to lift you higher. But you must understand you need God. You can't breathe without God. I can't even walk without Him holding my hand. Hallelujah. They had access. Look at the rewards. Sit down quickly. She was memorialized. You know what it means? She, he said, he said uh, Jesus said of her when she washed his hair, with the spy, with the, she washed his hair with the tears and with the expensive ointment, right? They wanted to stop her. They said, no, 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 don't do it. Let her go on. You see, Jesus didn't say, stop honor. Ah, hello, hello, everybody. Stop this honor. The man said, Judas, the spirit of Judas said, stop this honor, sell this perfume and give it to the poor. He's got a demonic spirit because he knew that if this, this woman will get a reward for honor, and Jesus said, No, stop this nonsense. Let her go on with what she's doing. So, as much as I want to stop you from bringing stuff here because I'm a man, I have a man with some fell on my face I have to be like Jesus and say no don't stop the people let them bring the honor because from this will flow the rewards and the miracles and the power and the access and the closeness go 
glory to God. Hallelujah. She will be memorialized. They will talk about her in 2023 in many churches. Some of the disciples and the 12 apostles, we don't even remember their names. If we say, say the names of the apostles, I circle say you, Peter, I say, this is Mark, Mark is this an apostle. But say, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke, Luke is not an apostle. No, 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 no. It was Peter, his brother Andrew, Bartholomew, those guys, James and John, those were, but we don't know all their names. Then it comes Matthias, uh, uh, another Simon. Ah, uh, but we remember Mary and Martha. Memorialize forever for what they did, for how they welcomed me, for how she didn't think it is in a, a waste of money to give something to the men of God of the moment. Oh, I love my preaching. I wish I had money, I would have put it in my offering. <laughs> oh, Jesus, uh, start putting the cream on the cake. Um, I'm almost finished. Are you still here? <clears throat> it's the honor. So those who honor will experience, number one, just quick stuff for you. It, they will experience supernatural power. If you honor... It's not new. Let me go back to my introduction. This is not the only thing that we have seen. It's not the only thing that we have seen in the Bible. Our churches didn't emphasize it. Now the Lord says to us, but you're overlooking some things in the Bible. Maybe that's why your churches are not growing big. That's why your people are not prosperous. Why are we struggling? Is it the color of our skin? No! It's principles we cannot see in the book but it's there they experience supernatural power and you too will receive supernatural power hallelujah in Nazareth he couldn't do mighty works but I tell you in Bethany it is not in Nazareth it's away from it's in Bethany oh closer to Jerusalem mighty works of miracles was received there hallelujah and I know many people that have been blessed in this church through the honor of me just by something small I said to them I always think of pastor say he is a man who honors me always with an offering greatly and when he came I laid my hands on him I said go to Johannesburg and go work there it's all the rest is history. He's a pastor of a church. He married a wife in Ghana. They have a child now. They couldn't have a child. All this because of his honor to me always. He, I didn't, he didn't give me money on offering after. He gave it long before. He said, whatever you say I must do, I will do. He said, I have a job in Joburg, but I think I must stay here. I said, no, I think you must go. Just I think like, like I didn't say, blah, 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 blah. Nothing like that. I just said, I think they must go. And so back to softly and tenderly, Jesus was calling. I said, go. And, and everything's changed. They have a kumbi now. Church kumbi has car cash. He earns a lot of money. I can't even tell you because you're going to phone him for, for loans. One of our biggest tithers. He's blessed by God because of his honor. And it is also something that the West Africans and the East Africans know that we colored here. Sorry to say, and I don't even know if the Isitkosa or the Chuanas, we have the same thing. But the East Africans and the West Africans, they, have, they understand a degree of honor. That's why they won't walk out of a service while the pastor is preaching. But the colored person will say, Hey, I'm going to go to the lang with the om. They are beskof and they have respect for God.
Number two, quickly. You will receive a great miracle. This is the reward of your honor. There will be power and supernatural miracle. Great miracles. Uh, if you show honor, you can expect a great miracle. Jesus did not go where people had needs. He went where he was honored. He went where he was honored. There was problems everywhere. But he went to the house of Lazarus and Mary where he had been received, loved and honored. Yes. Number three. Those who honor will have personal access. John eleven twenty. We go a little further down in the chapter. I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished now. John eleven twenty. 20. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she sent to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Put it in the NLT. Yes, she, she went to meet him. She went to meet him. Do you think anybody could just come? The disciples were like bodyguards. They, they blocked blind Bartimaeus. They blocked many children from coming to Jesus. So they couldn't just come. But because of her high level of honor, she could just go. I said, I want to see Jesus. I want to see him. Honor gives you access. Write it down if you're writing. Listen to this message again. In the honor gives you access. And I really believe that a lot of the access I have by God's grace is the honor. Is the honor. Hallelujah. Number four. Those who honor will experience close and intimate fellowship. Beautiful. Beautiful. Luke 10 verse 38. It came to pass as they went, he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house, King James Version. And she had a sister called Mary. This is now another gospel, also telling the story of these two ladies. Are you with me? The main story is in John 11, but Luke is another gospel. He writes and he says, Martha was cumbered about much serving, but Mary sat at his feet and heard the word. Beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Then they came and they had a little argument. Jere sê, wil jy die skot begoed of bas hier? Ek moet alleen weg, Jere. Hy sê, as ek kan nou ontja, hy sê, ok. But then he even, look, it's a domestic small thing. You wouldn't bother some great man like Jesus with it. But because he loved them so much, he got involved in the domestic disputes. Jesus is going to get involved in your house disputes. And the prophet that God sent you is also going to give you some guidance about your house disputes. Oh, yes. Oh yes We're talking about intimate fellowship She said Lord don't you care That my sister don't help me Tell her to help me But Jesus said Martha, Martha You know it's like he's talking to them Like friends man I do that a lot with the people here They know I say ach I do that a lot with the people here They know I do that a lot with the people here Alles heilig hier op die stuismaas, hulle kwaad raak, woe, Jesus. And I'm like Jesus, then I put my hands there and say, Ach, my sê, los, los, ma, los, ma. Moe nie, moe nie beklee nie, hoor. Moe nie kop skiet nou nie, moe nie kop skiet nie. You will solve personal quarrels that they had. Listen here. If you're going to be part of the church, it means you won't be out in the world much. But it doesn't mean that this is a place where angels dwell. No, the people make you quiet here, you. Yay! You saw when that sister was singing, she meant every word. You could see that she, she wanted you to understand she's been abused. <laughs> Glory to God. She's been thoroughly abused and misused. But she's still here. She, she pointed. So, 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 so look, don't, don't think when you have a little argument here, you finish here. Don't let the devil, just come. Jesus is in your house, man. 
Your prophet, your pastor is here. Just come tell him what they said to you. You will feel my, my hug is better than Jergen Klopp's hug. You someone won't understand, but anyway. I will caress you and I will hug and I will give you some sweet guidance. Yeah. Because it's there will be offenses. There's nothing I can do. It will come. Just come to me. I'll give you a hug. Oh, we ate the food cooked by Martha. Mm. He relaxed in the company, man. He relaxed. Yes. Number five, they experience extra love. John 11, 5. John 11, 5. John 11, 5. Jesus loved Martha. Everybody look at me. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. You all know that Jesus loved the whole world, isn't it? The Bible says, For God so loved the whole world. But He makes a special remark for people who honored Him. It's the only remark besides the little boy John that was a disciple, where Jesus, where there's an expression of his love. The Bible explicitly records, Jesus loved Mary and Martha. Hallelujah. Hmm. And Lazarus. Because they respected him. They honored him. He could sit in the house, he could eat, and they bestowed gifts are you, are you hearing me? Are you starting to understand what honor can do for you? You will experience extra love. Hmm. Hallelujah. And number six, you will receive more honor if you honor. Those who honor will receive more honor. Because in Mark 14 verse 9, the Bible says, Verily I say unto you, where this gospel will be preached throughout the world, what she has done will be spoken for, as a memorial for. In other words, she will be honored with more honor. So when you sow honor, you also will reap honor. The honor you see me receive is not just because I'm forcing it on you. I've sown honor. And that's why I reap honor. Oh, yes. I've always loved my pastors and my teachers. And I love them so much. Anybody that's connected to them, I will always try to treat that people so well. Not that I want them just to go and tell the main pastor how I treated them. It's just... I have an intense love for everything that's connected to that pastor. But somehow, I believe he hears that the stories always get there. And then it's almost like he knows, oh, it's spiritual, oh, it's supernatural. You kind of feel that this person honors you. Yeah. You can sense it. There's in some people here, I can see in their eyes, and I'm not lying to you, and I'm not talking carnal, spiritual. I can see in their eyes the level of honor. can see it. Because I think there are some things that are spiritually discerned that the, the natural man cannot see. You can see the way this person, the person might not have a two rand to throw into the basket. But the admiration I can see. It's not for my benefit. For your benefit. Because where the prophet is not honored, he can do no mighty works. Do you sometimes wonder why you're not being honored in this life? Do you wonder why no one honors you? It is probably because you do not honor anyone yourself. You reap what you sow. Amen? You reap what you sow. Honor begets honor. 
How will you ever be honored when you are a man who never honors another man? Why would anyone want to honor you? How come you never make a reference to your pastor or your father in the faith? Or any other man of God? You do not seem to have anybody above you. You never give honor to anyone. So don't ever expect to be honored also. And I'm closing. Those who honor will receive divine protection. Divine protection. Mark 14 verse 6. And when they attacked Mary for doing what she did, Jesus said, leave her alone. Why trouble her? She has done a good work on me. Hallelujah. Put it in the NLT. So nice this verse. Yeah, very nice. Leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will receive divine protection. Even though she was criticized and viewed with suspicion. That's why I used the word suspicion earlier, isn't it? Our church will almost be like viewed with suspicion. A special Sunday just to say thank you to their pastor. No, no, it's so it's Zij het die, want zij lees hier die bybel. Zij lees een metro burger, wat iemand van niet veel gegeer het van gister. Even if your motive is question, hoe kan zij dan so by jou, hoe kan praat, why you talk so much about your pastor, are you in love with him? I think they probably question Mary. Why is she getting so close to Jesus? What does she really want from him? But he defended her. And you will be defended. And he forgave her sins. Hallelujah. If you honor someone, they will always look kindly on you. Now, okay, listen to me. The last thing. If you don't want to use this in the church, just go try it at your work. Just honor your boss. And you will see how kindly he looks towards you. You see, the environment in the workplace is almost like, uh, what do they call it? Unions, no? It's about what any union. It's 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 not really a, 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 a godly thing, that thing. Because if you really honor your boss and you treat him well and you do what he likes, then you're going to see something come back your way. The, the world calls it... Uh, like you, you're creeping up, you, you're sucking something or what? Something, something. Sucking up, you know? You're creeping up or you... The Afrikaans has got some crude ways of saying things and I, and I can't, because of the recording, I can't say, because of my international audience in America, I can't say it in Afrikaans. But you know, you say, I say, I'm pretty... Oh man, you love it, boss, what it, man? It's almost like, you know, you... You, you really, you're trying to win this man's favor. But it's not so. You're just honoring him. You're honoring him. Now something that is beautiful, the world makes you think is bad. Something that is black, the world says is white. And when, the, when it's time to fire people, when there's not enough money in the company, the boss says no. I want this one to stay because he remembers the honor bestowed on him. It's the world. You are not of the world. You will apply the godly principles and your promotion will come to you soon. They will look kindly on you. Your boss is likely to overlook your mistakes when he senses your admiration and honor that you have for him. Because the person you honor will always look kindly at you. What was point number one? Let's see, this, this, this group takes notes here. I like this group. What was point number one? I'm teaching. Ololi, did you write down? You must point number one. You got it. Tell them what does honor do for you? It gives you supernatural power, Pastor. 
It gives you supernatural power. Honor gives you supernatural power, isn't it? Number two, what does honor do? You will receive a great miracle. You will receive a great miracle if you honor. Number three, Katie, hear the gym. Say it. You will have personal access. You will have personal access to the person. What's going on here? Do you have something? Number four, say it. You will experience closer and intimate honor. You will, you will experience close and intimate fellowship. Help it to spell intimate. Number five or oh, four. What, what number? Number five. They will experience extra love. They will experience extra love. You will experience extra love. I'm teaching you. What honor will bring for you? It's a reward. Somebody here? Number six? Honor if you can honor the man of God. Say it again. You receive honor if you can honor the man of God. You receive honor in return. Others will honor you because you honor the servant of God. Isn't it wonderful? And the last one? Baba had us know? Shame. Number seven. Receive divine protection. You will receive divine protection. You will receive divine protection. The others will say, hey, hey. I say it. Say your prophet. Lost, lost the person. Lost, lost. Lost, 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 lost. Lost. If you listen to this again and again and again, so when anybody asks you, why do you people have a special service for your pastor? Then you say, are you ready? Sit down, sit down, sit down. Is it tight? Is it tight? I can't go for tight luck. Fat your Bible. What's it here? Bible. But I have you so long a Bible here. Open at John chapter 11 verse 1. I want to show you a family that honored Jesus and all the rewards that they received. So I want to do the same because I also want the rewards of honor. Is it wonderful? Did you enjoy the teaching? Clap for the Lord. Clap for the Lord. Now, now I want to pray for someone. Everyone standing. Virgil, go to your place. Nobody walks around if we can. If you just hold on another two minutes, you can control your bladder. You're going to go to the toilet now, now. I believe the Lord is speaking here. You don't know the cost. Just flow with it of the alabaster box. Lift your hands. Does anyone know that song? Just flow with it, Virgie. The anointing will come on you now. Just there where you stand. I can feel it on me now. To honor is not the human principle. It's a godly principle. And if you are here and you never quite understood it, but today you say, Pastor, I'm beginning to see clearly now that the honor I give opens the door to many blessings. To many blessings. Sing it, Virgin. The room grew still as she made a way to Jesus. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger. Some spoke in anger. Heard folks whisper. Their 
There's no place here for her kind. But on she came. Still on she came. Through the shame that flushed her face. Until at last she knelt before his feet. Oh, yes. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard. As she poured a love for the master from her box of alabaster. I've come to pour. I've come to pour. My oil on him. My praise on him. Like oil from Mary's alabaster bar. Yes. Don't be angry. Be angry if I wipe. If I wash his feet with my tears. And dry them. And dry them with my hair. You were not there. You were there. The night Jesus found the me. The night he found me. And you did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. Yeah. You don't know of the oil in my alabaster box. Settle play it. Makate shoya kaha kara o. Makate ruko taya ha. Oya ya shata kate kota ha. Malakata shita la kota, Brendo shaya kati kota ya ka, Rala boka shete ka, Brendo la kaya. On she came to the plain that was the plain. All three, all three girls. Stand here. Lift your hands. You were there. The night he found me. You did not feel what I felt. Shadow, when he placed his loving arms around me, the name of Jesus. That's power. That is power. Bring this child. Take the camera off. You 
and day The night you found me, but oh You did not feel what I felt When you wrapped this loving arms Virgil's family here. Yeah. Virgil's family. Bring it. You don't know the cost. Where is he? Bring him. Never be the same. Never ever the same. There's a woman that is sick in body. If you believe I'm a man sent from God. Today you will receive your healing. Come forward. There's a woman sick in body. There's a growth in her body. Today the Lord says, if you can believe what was done, what was done in Bethany. Horizon and Botsaida can be done for you. I rebuke the sickness, the disease, the growth. I bind it in Jesus' name. I command your healing to come. Yes. That's the Holy Ghost. Is here. There's another woman. There's another woman. Stand there. There's a young woman also. There's a young woman. The devil wants to kill you. Keep, 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 keep. Okay, please. There's a young woman. The devil has an assignment to kill you. But through this prayer today, the instruction of the Holy Ghost, you will escape that death in Jesus' name. Receive healing. I command healing power to flow over you. I rebuke the sickness and the growth that's caused by the enemy. Yeah. 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 Bring them out if they are shouting, screaming. Bring them to me. We are almost finished. Just give me one moment. The Holy Spirit is working. I don't want to disturb the Holy Spirit. He's working. Bring them here. Brand the I command your healing power to flow. Jesus. Hey. The 
a dog that fell under the power there. I need that dog. Lift your hands. In the Alabas, the The anointing of the Holy Spirit breaks the yoke. Break the yoke of bondage. Jesus breaks Satan's banda. No! Krach van die Heilige Geest. May the Lord heal you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Yes. The Holy Ghost anointing on you. Of the oil in my alabaster bowl. Deliverance is coming to you. Healing. Rebuke every demonic power in the name of Jesus. Yes. The Lord delivers you and the Lord help you. It's never too late. on him. Yes. Receive God's touch. God's blessed anointing. Oh. Great ministration of powers. Uba Pashantata. Lift your hands. Touch everyone, Lord. May this understanding and this revelation come to all of us that honor has rewards, great rewards. We rebuke the devil's whispers and the criticism and the ostracism. We shall obey the word of God and we shall receive great breakthroughs and miracles and healings to the level that we honor so shall it be for us in Jesus mighty name is there anybody here don't, don't put your hands down maybe you came here as a visitor and you, you, your life is a mess we want to give your life to Jesus I'm closing I'm giving the mic over but I just want to pray for you you say, Pastor, if I die tonight, I'm not sure if I will go to heaven. Uh, I have not been serving God, but I want to start to serve Him. If there's somebody like that, put up your hand. I want to pray for you. Come to me, my brother. Is there anybody else? Come to me. Come to me. Come clap for them. Loli, go to the mic. You know that song? The road grows still. Just, just flow there. You'll learn it if you don't know it. Learn it now. The road grew still. The upper Mauritia. Lift your hand. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come to me. Oh, beautiful. Just stand there. Beautiful. The Bible says, if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. The devil has a plan to destroy your life, but vandaag kan die Heere verandering bring. Today is going to bring a change. Hallelujah. Say this prayer after me. Close your eyes. Mean it with all your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. 
I come to you today just as I am. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Save me today. Save me today. Wash me today. Wash me today. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Your precious blood. Your precious blood. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for on me. the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. I receive you now. I receive you now. Into my life. Into my life. With my heart. With my heart. I believe. I believe. And with my mouth. And with my mouth. I confess. I confess. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Died for me. Died for me. Rose on the third day. Rose on the third day. And today. And today he comes to live in my heart. He comes to live in my heart. And today, and today I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. Satan, Satan, I turn my back on you. I turn my back on you. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on the world. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. From this day forward. From this day forward. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Let us clap for the Lord.